All right, so um, I've been using Maya for a little while now, and I've always struggled with a technique to uh, render out a mesh on a, uh, any sort of object from Maya. Um, if you've ever tried to do it before, you usually have to do a bunch of walk-arounds in order to get it to work. I came upon a really useful technique, um, and I figured I would show it to you. So basically, I just have a, uh, an object here. It's, it's just a jet engine that I had uh, modeled a while back, um, and it still has all of the default textures on it um, and usually what I would do is I'll go ahead here and uh, go up to my render render globals and um, I will render out let me bring this in front here I'll render out this frame the way that I would normally render it out um, settings and everything um, and then after I do that we will set up the mesh render which is basically utilizing a basic Lambert shader and a couple tweaks in the mental ray um, render settings. All right, so here's the rendered frame um, of the engine. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to File. I'm just going to save this image to my desktop. Um, I'm going to save it as a JPEG. Um, doesn't really matter, obviously, what format. You could actually even save it out as a Maya IFF. Um, so I'm going to close this. So now here's the tricky part. Um, you can't actually now move the object because what we're going to do is we're going to composite it after the fact in Photoshop. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to set up the render globals for rendering out the mesh. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into features and this is in 2009. It might be a little different in some of the other versions. Basically what you're going to do is you're going to try and find contours um, and I believe it's usually under features or it used to be under maybe general. So you're going to click on contour rendering. You want to have hide source. You're going to have the flood color to black, oversample set to 40, the filter type Gaussian filter, and the filter support to 2.0. Um, now in 2009, this is a separate tab here where it says draw by property difference. Um, I believe in previous versions, these options are just simply below this within contour. So around all polyfaces or polyfaces is what you're looking for to check. So once that is done, I'm going to actually turn off global illumination and final gathering because you want to utilize just the basic uh, mental ray render. Um, so I'm going to close this out. Now what we got to do is we got to set up the actual shader that is going to generate the mesh. Um, so I'm going to go into my uh, hyper shade here and I'll open this up and we're going to create a new Lambert. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go up here to show input output connections. We're going to actually click the 17SG node that is on the shader. Um, and you can hit Control A to bring up your um, attribute editor for that. So right here, now we're inside the actual shader material. Um, and down here where it says contours, it's already dropped down. This probably will not be default. It won't be open by default. So you're going to click contours and you're going to enable contour rendering. Now the color, this is the color that the mesh is going to appear. You can make this black, blue, green, any, any color that you want. I usually leave it as black or white, but white usually works the best. Um, and then we want to go down here to width. This is actually going to set the width of the mesh. You want it to be something quite low, like 0.3, um, because it will actually be pretty thick, um, and you can overdo it real easily. Um, so that's basically all that you're going to do for the Lambert. And then we're going to close that. Um, let me move this back over. And then we're going to select our object. I'm going to select the whole thing. Right click, assign material to selection. So now we've assigned that whole material to the object that we want to render out as a mesh. And then we're going to go back up to our render and we're going to render it out here. So uh, there you can see um, we have a full mesh of the engine. Um, you notice that the lines are actually pretty thick. I probably could have turned down if we go back into our render, or I'm sorry, the hypershade, and I click this Lambert that I made um, that was basically, I probably should have named it, this was basically our, our mental ray um, mesh render node that I had made here. So if I scroll back down to contours and I turn this down to maybe like point, I don't know, point 0.1 or point 0.15, that will actually make the lines around the engine thinner. Um, so now I'm going to save this image out and then we're going to go over to Photoshop. Alright, so here we are, we're over in Photoshop right now and 
I have both my images that we rendered out. I have the, um, the fully rendered frame and then we have the mesh. Um, so basically all we're going to do um, is we're going to click and drag and drop one or the other on top of the other image. So basically now we've got one image with both um, both engines um, on uh, their own layers here. Let me bring the layers palette out and I'll show you. So we have uh, basically we've got the mesh on top and then the background is the rendered frame. And then all we're going to do is go up to screen and with that done you can see that as screen mode does it makes everything black transparent. Um, and the, the, the good thing about this is you have a lot of freedom. You know, I can turn down the opacity here and, and make the mesh sit a little bit more on top of the engine or you can pop it out more. The other thing that you can do is if I invert this by hitting Apple I and then turn this to multiply, we have a black mesh on the motor um, or your object, whatever it be. Um, and again, we can tone this down. Now, this um, is great for rendering out still frames, but it works really well for animation purposes as well. Granted, you have to render out obviously one animation with your, um, you know, your fully rendered scene, and then another animation using the steps that we just took to set up the uh, the mesh render. But like I said, rendering the mesh out takes considerably less time. I mean, it's 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 very quick. Uh, the render on this engine, um, you know, with the full uh, with the global illumination and final gather setup, probably takes about two minutes and thirteen seconds, where the mesh alone only took about twenty five seconds. Um, and so that can also lead to After Effects. Uh, a lot of you know a lot of compositing is done in After Effects. Um, you basically set up one layer with your animation with your mesh and the same layer below it, and you can do a really cool 3D turntable like I'm sure a lot of you've seen out there where people have a 3D turntable of um, you know their model spinning and the mesh fades onto the object and then fades away again. So, anyways, um, I hope this helped. I found it was very useful, and uh, thanks for watching.